Hello! It's been a while, but there's a reason for that. Uh, basically, I've been uh, sourcing parts and buying parts for the manual swap. So, here's the gearbox, and we've got a bunch of other stuff around there. Pedals and bell housing stuff. So, that's why I haven't been uploading, because I've been spending money on nothing but manual swap stuff. But, that's for another time. Uh, this time, today we are fitting new inner and outer tie rods. Because, uh, if you remember this clip, this is causing the toe to go out, um, to go out every time I get it aligned. That's super annoying. Um, the steering wheel is ever so slightly to the left and it's starting to wear the inner tread on the tire and it's really annoying to drive as well it's just it throws your brain off so uh today we're going to replace uh both sides um and hopefully get the toe permanently in line <laughs> i will go through all the manual parts later and uh, explain where i'm up to with that so stick around to the end of the video and you'll see what's going on so here's everything we're gonna need. We've got the outer tie rod with the castle nut and the split pin. Here we've got the inner tie rod and the little washer that goes on the inside, that way. We've got some new boots. We've got some stainless steel cable ties, which I think is what's on it right now, but we'll have a look. And uh, there's some clips for this side as well. So I've just realized that this is about 18 millimeters and the clip here is 16. So we're going to have to try and squeeze it on. Okay, the reason being is because the thickness of this clip fits inside this little gap uh, for the 16mm one. And the 18mm one doesn't fit in the gap. So we're going to have to squeeze that 16 on there. Hopefully it'll fit. They're all blueprint parts. I'll put all the part numbers in the description. I didn't get Toyota OEM because, well, because of what's going to happen in the future. There's no point in spending crazy money. And I think Blueprint are pretty good, anyway. This time I've jacked the car up this way. I would not recommend it. It is uh, a pain to set up. And it's safe. I hope. Looks safe. It's all right. It'll be fine. <sighs> this one, please explain this to me. Looks like the primer is still on. But the paint is stripped off again. So it looks pretty shit now, but I'm gonna have to redo them at some point. It's really annoying. I can't figure out what I did wrong. So we're gonna remove the two um, caliper bolts, this one and the one below, and uh, remove the caliper so that we can get to the tie rod underneath. This was done nine months ago and these bolts are already rusty and these are Toyota OEM bolts as well. Oh, I've gotta move, I can't live in England anymore. These bolts are 17 millimeter. Right. No. Remove the caliper. Now we're gonna take the split pin out and get the nut off. Might be able to pull that out from the other side now. Okay, let's try and pull it out. It's so awkward. Get out. You probably can't even see what I'm doing because the light isn't that good. Yes, it's out. All right, one of them's out, which means either one will slide out just like that. Okay, let's get the uh, nut off. What size is that? Well, that's not that size. I wonder if it's a 17. It is a 17. Hopefully this will come undone. Oh, so easy, I was expecting that to be a nightmare. Cool. Now hopefully it hammers out all right. Oh, no. Just hammered my camera. Oh, of course. Let's see if this works. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so easy. Nice. So I'm just gonna use some pliers to get this clip off. Oh, okay, very easy. That's what we like. 
then there's another one here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Right, so there's another one here, and I'm not entirely sure how it comes off, so I'm just gonna go get a screwdriver and play around with it. Okay. Let's try and prise this part off. It looks like there's a little clip here. I mean, fine. Uh, hi, Brian. <laughs> how, how are fun? you? How are you? It's fun. It's been a while. Fun. It's been a long time. There we go. Let's pull this off. So now that the boot is back, we can see that there's a little washer here, just like the one I showed you we were going to put on before. We're going to have to hammer here so that we can get this off because see it's bent over a little bit and then we can get a, uh, a spanner onto it and twist it off. I've done this side. I've hammered this so it's, uh, it's clear of the edge now. So this side is a bit of a nightmare to get to. It's just really awkward angle. It should be, uh, it should be twist and loose. No problem. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it should twist off now. Let's try and pull that. Ow. Uh, I wonder if I can turn the steer steering wheel and pop it out more. Let me try that. If I turn it to the left, this should pop out. <laughs> okay, I could have done that ages ago and made this way easier for myself. But, I'm a dope. Right, let's give that a go now. Should be a lot more accessible. <laughs> it is a lot more accessible. Still really awkward though. I have to move the camera because it's too difficult to do it in that position. Oh, oh yes, it's going. Cool. That is out. And the washer, you can see there, has those two little, two little flaps. They go in those notches there, like this. Anyway, that's out. So as you can see, the thread is just dead. Um, this is why I'm having so much trouble. And this is like welded, <laughs> almost, to here. It's just, it's just because the thread inside is so, is so bad. I remember doing it last time, it was like literally squeaking. And we had to get it cherry red hot just to uh, even move it. In the end, I just ended up cutting this off because I'm not going to reuse it anyway. It's really awkward to undo. It's like this little clasp mechanism. All right, here's how it's gonna go. So we're gonna get the washer, and with the tabs putting outwards, or inwards, I should say, towards the serum rack, I'm gonna put that on there, and that's gonna screw in. Those are gonna go in the little notches, um, which I'll show you here. They're gonna go in these little notches either side. Then the boot's gonna go on, then the clip is gonna clip onto this section. I'll put some lithium grease in there so that I can slide it on further. Uh, then we're going to put a steel table kai, uh, a steel, t a steel, oh my god. Then we're going to put a steel cable tie around here and lock it onto uh, this section, just as it was before. Uh, then the nut's going to go on, then the outer tie rod's going to go on. Once this is tightened into the steering rack, we're going to hammer the edges um, of the washer over the edge of this, just so this can't come undone. The washer acts as a lock. So with the washer on and the tabs pointing inwards, I'm just gonna screw this in. We're gonna make sure that these little tabs go right in that slot, right like that. And then screw this all the way in. So as you can see, the tabs are locked inside there. I'm just gonna do it pretty much as tight as I can get it by hand. Now unfortunately this is too thick, so I'm gonna find something else. I don't think I've got anything else. This is bad. I really need some thinner ones. Maybe this will fit? No. This one's a lot thinner, but I don't know 
if it opens wide enough. Uh, yes, it does. That's about as tight as I'm gonna get it. Okay, the reason I'm using pipe grips and not a spanner is because basically this is thinner than my spanner here and my spanner, my adjustable won't fit in and my normal spanner won't fit in and also because these are angled and as you can tell now if I tried to get a spanner in there or a spanner in there I wouldn't have any move, uh, room to move so that's why I'm using pipe grips so I'm just going to get this as tight as I possibly can right, can't get any tighter than that right, now I'm going to get the hammer and just Start bending this over. Just gonna have a feeling it's gonna be pretty annoying. So there's not a lot of room. <laughs> if this one's this hard, how am I gonna do the one on the top? There's like no room. As soon as you get it to a certain point, you can hit it from this side, which makes it a lot easier. But it's just that initial side hitting. Just get it as flat as you can against that edge. And they'll do the other side. <laughs> I don't see how. This hammer's too big. I'll show you. Well, I've got to try to get this in. Right in there is barely any room at all to get a hammer in there. Maybe I'll get a little, uh, a smaller hammer and try that. Alright, so what I'm doing is I'm getting the ball side of the hammer in here and then just pushing it down like that. It, it will work eventually. It's just gonna take some time. So I did what I said with the other hammer and then I used this little hammer just to just about get enough room to hit it downwards like this. It was a nightmare. Now I've turned the wheel all the way to the right. You can see that the washer fits inside the outer ring part of the steering rack, so all good. I'm just gonna put a little bit of lithium grease on the tie rod just so I can slide this part of the boot on easier. Alright, let me just slide this one. Oh, it went on way easier than before. Let me try and push this up right over there. Just, there'll be a little notch where it sits in and it won't move from there. Um, and then obviously we need to get this top part on, which I'll show you from another angle. So the bottom of that part is actually on. This part here, we need to push on at the top. <laughs> Might not be able to do it on camera, to be honest. <laughs> that wasn't so bad, actually. I was just twisting it and pushing it at the same time. And you'll hear it and feel it snap on. I've got myself a steel cable tie. And I'm just gonna get it in the groove and pull. Is it quite difficult to get tight? It's not going any tighter than that. That's ridiculously loose. Okay, so I've learned a little tip. Basically, if you get a screwdriver, and put it in the little ball bearing that's in the uh, inside the cable tie end and then push in and then pull so push in with the screwdriver and then pull with the pliers like this it'll go tight perfect holy moly they're impossible to cut there we go so a very big thank you to Fast Rust for that tip. I'll leave a link in the description. I just tried the uh, the 16 millimeter uh, clip and it doesn't fit. Uh, it doesn't. It's not big enough when I open it. So this is the 16 millimeter clip and it just doesn't fit on. So I'm gonna have to use the 18 mil. It's gonna have to. It's gonna have to hang over a bit. I could use the old one, but it's actually stuck at the moment on the old tie rod. It does fit on, but it's on the edge, which is kind of annoying. But I don't think it's gonna fall off, so. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty solid on there. Next, I'm gonna put the nut on. <laughs> right, so I managed to get this loose. I just put the nut end in the vise, and then twisted it, pulled it up with a, uh, a spanner. So now I'm gonna count the number of turns it takes to get off, so then I know how many turns I've gotta to do to put the other one on, um, so that the, the toe remains relatively the same before uh, we can adjust it. Let's see how many it takes. One, two, three.
18. 18 and a bit. Okay, so now we know. Look at the thread on that. That was vastly different to the other side. Look at this. The difference in those threads is insane. That's nice and black and new. That one's rusty, these UK roads. So obviously we want to put the right one on the right hand side. And that R represents that. Make sure you get that right, otherwise, yeah, you're gonna be in trouble. So I'm gonna put 18 and a bit turns. I'm gonna start from this, this side here, because that's how it went on on the other one. So we've got one, two, Seventeen, eighteen. That's it. That should be it. So I'm gonna tighten this nut up just a little bit for now. Brush this off a bit. Get that surface clean before we install. And I'm gonna bring these together. Might be better if I move the steering out a bit. So I'm gonna turn it to the right. Let's bring this up here and then put the nut on. Now, let's check that moves. Here we go, all good. This is a 19 millimeter nut. I'm gonna torque it down to 87 Newton meters. Here we go. And I'm just gonna turn it just a little bit extra just so the hole lines up for the split pin. A little bit more. Okay, it's flipping time. So I'm gonna put it in with the long one on the top, although I don't think it's gonna matter um, in this case. Just slot it through. And I'm gonna use a hammer to just hammer it through as far as you can get it right now. now I'm gonna get some long nose pliers and take this one and bend it over the top. Just like this. And then hammer it down. That's a bit wonky. It's sitting over the top. And then I'm gonna hammer that end down. Then for this bottom one, I'm gonna cut it a little bit, maybe halfway. Then with a mini hammer, it's gonna knock that down. Now it's time to put the caliper back on. That really does look like shit. Ow. Now we're gonna to torque these down to 118 Newton meters. There we go. Oh, I almost forgot to tighten this. Very important. I almost forgot to tighten this nut. The last one was a 19, but this one seems to be bigger. Yeah, the 19 doesn't fit on. So, uh, I don't have anything bigger than 19. It's gonna have to be two, uh, two adjustables. <laughs> Squeeze them together. <sighs> right, that's tight. And that is the tie rod installed. And my shitty brakes. Oh, look at the state of that. This is what it was like when I installed it nine months ago. This is what it's like now. <laughs> oh no! I think because when I sprayed this at night, uh, after after I let the primer dry after 30 minutes, it was like 10 degrees when I put the paint on. I'm pretty sure that's why it hasn't stuck because the primer's still on the metal. Um, but the problem is that the paint didn't stick to the primer. So, lesson for next time, even though I painted them twice, I still made the same mistake. So now, I'm gonna go do the other side. It's pointless me filming it, because it's exactly the same. Uh, and that's it. Let's move on to other things. All right, that's both sides done. Remember to torque your wheels up to 103 newton meters, and we're good to go. All right, we're gonna go for an alignment now, because this is how the steering wheel sits when the car is straight. Before I did the tie rods, the wheel was about 10 degrees to the left. Now it's about 20 or 30 degrees to the right, so need to sort it out. 
So here we are at Downside Ties. This is usually where I get my alignments done, but Simon isn't in today, so we've got someone else. I don't know who it is. Alignments all sorted. Wasn't able to film, unfortunately. Uh, Simon wasn't there because he's recovering from kidney cancer, so we wish him all the best. He's been very ill, but he's doing okay. So let's have a look at where we were when we first went in. So left toe wasn't so bad. Right toe was out one degree, or just over one degree. Not a million miles away. Notice the Cambria as well, two and 1.4. We did try to fix it, but those bolts are about ready to crack and snap, so uh, gonna have to sort those out first and get some new ones. Funnily enough, it did actually change when we were trying to undo the bolt. Not too far away, so not a huge deal. Rears 1.5 each, but the most important thing is the toe. Managed to get that all sorted out. Was really easy because, of course, the parts are new, so everything went pretty smoothly. Next step is to get some camber bolts uh, for front and rear, because those ones have definitely had their day. Um, I have got one, actually, because I thought I needed to replace one at one point, uh, which I do, but I thought this was a toe arm one, it's actually a camber bolt. So I'm gonna get another one of these and then two for the front. But not just that, I'm gonna replace pretty much all of the suspension. All the arms are gonna get replaced, um, or most of them for now, because I have other future plans for the front. So there's no point in replacing it all right now. Uh, there's a lot of surface rust and uh, it looks pretty bad. Uh, some, some parts are worn away. As I've mentioned this before, the rust on the car is probably the worst thing. Um, it's not deep to the point where it's you know unfixable it's definitely fixable mostly just surface stuff on the suspension components the sills need to be redone again because last year they were done and the rust is starting to come through again not terribly and it's only in one specific spot so should be fine right so let's move on and talk about where i'm up to with the manual swap this is the main reason why i haven't been uploading videos i've just been spending all the money that would go into other stuff on the car on the manual swap so let's dive into what i've got so far so plans have slightly changed a little bit so going with the j160 gearbox from the is 200 this is the same as the az6 uh, i've got the ecu this needs to go down to chris at uh, phoenix phoenix management to get reprogrammed so that it'll accept the new gearbox uh, a mobilizer needs to be removed as well so it'll work on my car uh, I've got the clutch uh, hose, I've got the clutch master cylinder, clutch slave cylinder. There is one on here already that works pretty well, but I thought if I'm going to change everything and make everything new, I might as well change that as well. I've got a bride shift boot, purple, going to match the interior, more about that later. Uh, gold uh, shift knob from Mishimoto, uh, again going for a particular theme on the interior. Clutch pedal from an IS200, brake pedal from an IS200, and some new pedal covers because these ones have uh, seen better days. This is the bell housing adapter. So it's an IS200 bell housing with the plate that matches a 2JZ engine. Not 100% sure what this is, but I know it's important. <laughs> and uh, got the bearing and uh, a couple of bolts there as well to match everything up. Still need to get the drive shaft from an IS200 and also uh, the clutch and flywheel kit from Conceptua Performance. Very close to getting everything that I need. Uh, still gonna do it this year, <laughs> still gonna do it in the summer. Everything going to plan, uh, but I've got a few other things that I've sort of been thinking about and changing around in my mind about how I want this build to progress. Basically, I'm going for handling and safety and all that stuff first before I whack a turbo in there. That's why I'm just putting this manual gearbox in for now. I don't want to put an R154 in because everyone else who puts an R154 in their uh, IS300s or Supras for that matter always ends up changing it out for something better, either a CD009 or a T56. So I thought just to get the car manual for now, I'll just throw a J160 in there because it's gonna handle the power just fine that it's, that it's got right now. People usually run these up to, I think 350, maybe 400 horsepower before they sort of crap out and die. Uh, the counter shaft on them, I think, is what snaps. There's some sort of set clip mod you can do to strengthen it or whatever, but anyways, yeah, the, the plan is to strip all the interior in the car put some new seats in which I'm going to test out next week 
uh, and get a cage in there, uh, change the wheel, get some harnesses in and you know change all the suspension components, all the bushings because I think that's what the car needs and I need to learn how to drive the car and drift the car at a lower power than it would be if it's turboed because you know I've, the simulator is great for practicing on but real world experience I need to start with you know 210 horsepower is absolutely fine anyway so that's a, just a little update I don't want to go on too long because uh, you know it's going to be in future videos but thanks for watching like subscribe comment follow me on Instagram no one follows me on Instagram it's crazy I'll leave a link right here um, and yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.